Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's lecture with photographer Maki Kawakita. From high fashion photography to kabuki style imagery to self portraits, Maki creates edgy contemporary images renowned for their bold performance and thought provoking composition. As a well known fashion photographer, she has photographed numerous celebrities such as Alicia Keys, Paris Hilton, Beyonce, and Missy Elliott. She has also shot several advertising campaigns for Coors Light, Levi Strauss and Company, Virgin Records, Warner Music, and Smirnoff. Her camera has taken her all around the world and her global experience has inspired her work, most notably her connection to the Japanese, American, and European cultures. Her work has been featured in many publications such as Time, Marie Claire, and Vibe. Some of her recent shows included a 2009 exhibition at Afad Gallery in Turkey and an exhibition in 2008 at the NMM Gallery in Milan, Italy. Also in 2008, she was awarded the Prix de Photographie in Paris for portraiture and was selected as one of Japan's top 100 photographers in 2007. What makes Maki Kawakita a special guest speaker for our Art Institute of Pittsburgh Online Division Photography Department lecture series is that she's also an instructor at our school. And now, Maki, I will pass the platform over to you. Welcome. Right. So, I'm going to start talking about uh, my influence first because uh, you would probably understand why I have that color, I have that sort of. Uh, poses for the models. Uh, so here's my mother. Uh, she's a Japanese dance performer and also a teacher and um, I grew up in this theatrical world of Japan um, and I'm always in a, uh, behind the scene. Uh, she will be doing the makeup or hair or uh, anything like that but I was so obsessed with it and really liked that uh, whole process of it. So here's uh, me um, when I was three years old. So I, <laughs> as you can see, I really was in, interested in this type of world and I'm really loving to have all the makeup done. And so um, this was what I really like to do. Um, and this is Kabuki Theater. I'm not sure if you are familiar with it, but um, uh, it has really uh, vibrant colors and very exaggerated makeup and, um, costume, I mean, everything is really um, out there. And um, this, I have to say, this has been a, a big influence of my work, um, whether that be color or the poses, just everything about it. But then in Tokyo, where I grew up, um, there's also this street culture as well, and I'm really uh, like that culture. Um, and again, uh, this is kind of kabuki words pop onto the street. So um, people were really colorful stuff and they just really like an animation, animation character. So um, these two um, culture in Japan, the traditional and subculture, uh, had a big influence on me. Um, and um, so Having that, and I moved to the States in 1999, I just wanted to go to a master's program in New York. So uh, first I went to Rochester Institute of Technology, and I just was just kind of uh, learning and getting ready to go to master's degree. Um, but then I also wanted to start working as well. So I, um, um, I just had about maybe 10 pictures that I shot in RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology, and I just started showing that to people. So it's not really ideal situation as a starting a photographer, just have 10 pictures in hand and I didn't even have a portfolio. But uh, I showed them around and uh, it got one of the magazines, eyes. it's called Future Original Magazine uh, in Japan. So they uh, assigned me to do a fashion shoot. Um, and at that time, I wasn't really focusing on doing fashion or uh, anything. I just really liked shooting people. 
Um, but because of probably my influence from a uh, kabuki world, I really was uh, interested in the hair and makeup and costume. So here I am shooting my first fashion image or first, first photograph assignments um, for magazine. And this picture really was to me the picture uh, to move forward um, because that this picture got the eye of American Photo Magazine um, and they did the spread of uh, my picture and it was under spotlight so um, it got me a little bit of attention in the state side as well um, and somebody in France saw this uh, work and the next thing I know they contacted me this was about the time I graduate from graduate school uh, they contacted me to do an um, exhibition with them. So it was great for me. I was about to finish the master's degree and then I'm um, having an offer for an uh, exhibition. I'm like, yeah, why not? I'm going to do it. So uh, it was a great experience and I flew to uh, Paris and um, a lovely experience. So really, you know, I did not have so much work in my portfolio, but that one image really took me to a different level. Um, so, um, you know, you as a student as well, um, you know, you're shooting, you're shooting assignments for the school, but don't shoot the assignment just for the school. You always have to think that that might get into a magazine, that might get you to a different level as a photographer. So, yeah, take your any type of assignment, school or the professional, just take it really seriously because uh, you never know where that's going to go to. Um, so these are uh, some of the work from that uh, Barbie series that I did. Uh, it was really fun um, shooting this and I used this hotel in Japan called Lab Hotel. Um, it's like the subculture hotel but it, it has funky uh, interiors and whatnot, so it was pretty good. It worked for me very well. Um, and then, um, as a photographer, I I always interested in doing more advertisement, and commercial photography. Um, but uh, to get there, it's really good to start uh, from editorial. So uh, I was doing a lot of editorials, and this is one of the. Uh, uh, editorial shoots that I did for this is a Victor magazine. Um, really fun stuff. And yeah, this I wanted to show you. Escape. I want to show you just a little bit, little bit of the video so you can tell uh, what I did. Okay, I think that's enough. Um, you can watch it uh, more if you want to um, in YouTube if you uh, type in Maki Kawaki, that it should show up. Okay, so I have to go back to the slideshow. Oh, okay, from the start. Okay. Um, all right, so um, yeah, this shoot was really fun, and the, the model is 14 years old. She's so young, and but she had great body and she uh, was able to move around a lot. And as you can tell, um, I like to do these quirky poses. It's just what I like to do. Um, and I, I um, don't really call that a pose. It's more like a choreography to me. I have the theme, I have the concept, and to uh, express the concept, I have certain type of uh, choreography in a way, um, so you can call that a pause, but uh, uh, so uh, it usually come up uh, 
in a very strange pose, <laughs> so model um, have a hard time. But she did a great job as a 14 years old, and uh, it took a long day. Um, this actually, this location is in Philadelphia. Um, so we we drove from New York City a day beforehand, and then stay one night at a hotel, and then from the next morning, early morning, we start shooting. And this is the last shot we did. It's uh, at night time, so it took really all day, but really worth it. It was a nice shoot. Um, and this is uh, for another magazine called Dune Magazine. It's a, a really, really good fashion magazine. Um, and I was able to do the fashion story and it became a cover of the magazine as well. Um, really good. But this is very cold. It was shot in the winter time, so all the models have to be almost like a naked. And uh, I felt so bad. And we only had a very small space heater, and we just blew on them. I uh, hope that they didn't get sick. But um, it was again a really good shoot. Um, so here um, I wanted to also talk about my uh, background a little bit. Um, so I started going to art school in Tokyo uh, just to learn about the drawings, paintings, and sculpture, uh, just to get into the art world or the art university before. Um, so uh, it was a good experience for me. And later I graduated from the uh, bachelor's. I started working as a, a teacher at this school. Uh, but so this school got me into an uh, Art University in Japan, and uh, my major was uh, graphic design. Um, and that graphic design experience was a great thing for me. Um, I think that um, the composition that I use in image, or some of the graphic work even that I do on image, is coming from this background. Uh, so I'm trying to use everything that I know into my photography. It's, it's great. Um, so 1999, as I said, I moved to the United States and uh, attended to Rochester Institute of Technology. And then after that, I moved to New York City um, and attended the SBA, the School of Visual Arts, for the uh, photography. And um, that was really nice because I didn't really have a formal training as a photographer. As you can see, I had a graphic design experience, but not so much of a photographer uh, or photography. And all I did before this time, the master program, was to shoot people on the street or just to shoot dancers in studio, uh, just the people around me. Um, and I used to dance as well, so I knew a lot of dancers, and this was a good way for me to get into photography. Um, so, yeah, um, I didn't really have much of an experience, technical experience, and uh, I've learned a, a lot in Rochester Institute of Technology for one year, and then uh, moving on to learn more about the uh, critical and theoretical side of photography. So. That uh, became my foundation of photography. So um, here you can see my influence of graphic design um, and everything else that I mentioned as uh, uh, my formal education. Um, yes, the, I learned the uh, composition from drawing classes um, and the background and just composing the background and the model from the graphic design experience. So um, it's all coming together, uh, me as a photographer. And so I think that the, the education for me is really important. Um, but um, this is a shoot that I did for uh, another magazine called Luya Magazine. Uh, that's also a Japanese magazine. Uh, but they are not only fashion magazine, but also uh, future industry, culture, and uh, music. They were big in music, and that really was a good thing for me. Um, I've shot for this magazine for a long time, and I became like a cover, uh, cover magazine cover photographer for a few years. Um, that got me into a different type of job, and uh, here, this is a, a Vibe magazine. 
um, in the States, and uh, I did a similar type of graphic meeting, photography type of work here. It was really fun, but as you can tell, there are many layers here. So the graphic layer is in the background, and in the photography, I shot uh, in, wow, so many, just one each character I shot separately, so you can imagine how many shots I had and then combine everything together. Uh, that was fun. And the things about a shooting like this, you need to also think about permission because using Godzilla and Ultraman, you need to get a good permission, uh, you know, formal permission. Uh, so that took a little time and then finally I was able to use the character. So um, being a photographer, I, I learned by doing it, but um, you know, not only you have to be a good photographer, but also have to know other logistics. You will have to um, be a good talker, good mega theater. Uh, of course, if you're getting bigger and you have assistants and other people doing your job, great. But I think in the beginning, you will have to have that character yourself. You will have to talk to people, you will have to, know how to negotiate people, and uh, I use it a lot here uh, as well, um, you know, talking to different people and um, get some permissions for myself, I did that as well. But uh, this was really, really fun shoot. Um, um, I was on the ladder shooting down on this, because, you know, the animation type of theme, you want to have a lot of different angles. So. I've shot from different angles, it was all that fun. Um, and this is uh, another magazine um, uh, in the States and uh, shooting the uh, wrestler. This was also fun, but this time I didn't do the background, uh, the graphic background. I uh, worked with another artist called Kojo, um, an animator. Um, so this was a great experience for me. Uh, because I used to do everything myself, and uh, he was able to do the uh, illustration parts for me. So, great. Um, and for this shoot, I flew from uh, New York to Arizona. And Arizona at that time was very, very hot. Um, but it was a good shoot. Um, and um, going to Arizona, the flight was delayed for amazing. And I think I sat in the airplane for like seven hours. Um, and then the, finally the flight took off and then it, there was some kind of problem and it landed somewhere else. I mean, it was crazy going into uh, Arizona. I was worried that I won't be able to make it to the photo shoots, but luckily we flown uh, a day before, so we got there on time. I mean, we got there very late at night and then we shot the next day, so that was no problem. But a uh, very nice memory about that. Um, and so there are many, many graphic uh, slash photography uh, images that I did. And this is for a French bank called BMP Paribas. Um, and these are the comedian of uh, uh, France. Uh, they're really fun to work with and it was nice. Um, this was a cutout, a key shaped cutout, um, things that the uh, set designer created and set designer brought in these things. Uh, the, this shoot took a, uh, a while. I think that we shot all day, but then the preparation uh, and post-production, so it took a long day, a uh, long day, long uh, weeks and months to actually finish the uh, creations. Um, in the background, actually my sister, who is also a graphic designer, helped me drawing the background at this time. Um, really nice to collaborate with other people. And uh, um, as you can see that the I did the editorial and then I started getting more bigger job um, like the advertisement. Um, so really it's a process. I didn't get there right away. It was just kind of a process and I did so much editorial. Uh, but working for advertisements, um, you know, you have to think about um, getting into it, get your vision into the work as well as satisfying your client. And this mixture is quite challenging. Um, but uh, I think some of the uh, clients, my clients know my taste and know what I do. So 
uh, sometimes they just ask me for opinion about the creative ideas and that is an amazing situation as a photographer um, you know you're not just shooting what they say you are um, giving your idea to them so that is great so uh, if you are the photographer who wants to shoot commercial work you will have to think about this combination of your vision and clients needs um, it's really good to think about that and of course your negotiation skill uh, should be there to uh, discuss about that blending um, so here's course light uh, for the US um, and this image it looks like um, uh, they're outside and uh, having fun barbecuing uh, this was actually indoor, well I wouldn't say indoor but it was at the bar but the bar had a rooftop and so we used a rooftop to create this image there are some plants but I think that the uh, prop stylist uh, brought everything in and I use lots of light here um, I've used at least 8 or 10 lights uh, because I have to mimic the image of outdoor having sunlight and you know having fun so the vibrant color has to be there and I use a lot of light so if you shoot in large scale environment you need a lot of light so um, this was fun and uh, people are so animated but I also played music for them and I was singing with them uh, you know because you as a photographer you have to be the director uh, you have to Put everybody into that scene and so the entire photo shoot and the entire scene was uh, just like a like a party uh, I had to create that that mood and you know because you really read in the photography um, you are um, giving some type of mood and uh, motivation for the models as well um, and this I flew to uh, Kuwait um, this was an experience and I was already uh, went back to Japan uh, from New York to do some shoots so I was uh, having a meeting with other people and then the, uh, my agency from New York called and said okay you have a job in Kuwait I'm like Kuwait okay I've never been there um, I never even know how things are in Kuwait so you know when you have that situation you really have to worry about your equipment and that's what I worry about first Okay, great. You know, I don't even find any uh, rental uh, studio or the equipment, so I had to bring everything basically uh, over there. I had an assistant going with me, and the uh, assistant brought a bunch of equipment. Um, and the production there, uh, I think they deal a lot with Dubai. Uh, and they brought some stuff from Dubai and the model also was uh, um, got it from Dubai because we couldn't find anybody in Kuwait uh, we couldn't find any equipment in Kuwait so yeah everything was kind of brought in and I stayed there for about a week uh, because it was all location shooting this one we drove to a desert for 30 minutes to shoot so uh, every day it took a long time to shoot one image I think uh, two images was maximum to shoot and it also due to the weather they have there it's really really hot so shooting daytime was a no-no so we have to get up very early in the morning go to the desert and shooting and then just take a break during the day and then shoot again in the afternoon that's what we had to do um, so it took uh, quite a while uh, this was really fun uh, I guess uh, people over there some people really rich to have a hobby like this so it's a huge uh, airplane and uh, he's controlling it uh, but it was a really really fun shoot so you can see this was shot in the morning this was shot in the afternoon nothing in the daytime oh but uh, this one because it was so hot some of the some of my equipment stopped working so that was hard um, and I predict that so I had you know different set of cameras and, and lighting and that helped me so when you're shooting you always want to have backups um, 
you know, always, always, two or three cameras even, that would be great. If you're going somewhere that you do not have access to any equipment, you have to think all that stuff. Um, and this was shot for Hysteric Glamour, it's a fashion uh, designer, um, and this was in New York City, um, near the Wall Street area, um, and uh, it was a fun shoot. Um, and this one is a good example of my clients, uh, commercial clients. Hysteric Glamour and I works, uh, have been working for decades, and um, they you know, trust my creativity, so they will just give me the budget and they say, okay, what do you do, whatever you want to do. Um, and that's just a dream uh, way of working as a photographer. You have a budget and you can just deal with everything else by yourself. Um, so that was great. Um, and of course, my assistant helped me a lot on that, you know, preparation. But, you know, this wasn't really a prop. It was actual garbage. And because I live very close, I knew this uh, garbage will be here. And I thought, oh, my God, this is great for this concept that I had. And um, so we shot here. Well, um, and to create this uh, really shiny street, I bought some water, like gallons of water, and just splashed everywhere. And uh, having the back lighting, uh, it made the street like shiny. Um, so we did all this, and then just really uh, about five minutes after we finished, the garbage was taken away. So I had a good timing of shooting this one. Um, really fun stuff. So you see more of the hysteric glamour images here. Uh, Stuff. Okay, so here I'm showing the celebrity work, and uh, in the beginning I show um, some of the editorial work, and I said this Louis magazine really liked the uh, music in the magazine. So Louis magazine really got me a lot of um, celebrity shots, uh, celebrity assignments, and this is Days and Confused in the UK, um, and then you see Elliot, and this is uh, Rihanna. But uh, yeah, that magazine jobs got me into uh, commercial as well as music and celebrity. Uh, really nice, you know, I um, didn't really go and uh, talk to the um, people in that field, but uh, the magazine kind of got me into that in the beginning, and then I started talking to that field. So it was much easier because I already had some pictures to show to them. Uh, this was shot in Jamaica, by the way. It was lovely. Um, flown from New York, and um, uh, they they really put us into an amazing resort. So um, good shooting and good experience. Um, but a shooting with celebrity, uh, typically you have about 20 minutes to shoot. So because they have a lot more photographers lined up to shoot for them, so. Um, I do have about 20 minutes usually to shoot. Um, and for that situation, you and assistants are working hard beforehand. Before the model is coming in, you already set up everything uh, for the model to just kind of pop in. Um, so this is Paris Hilton I shot in LA. Really nice shoot, and she's very professional, and uh, we had good shoot. This is Beyonce also in LA. Um, this was just my idea, one of my Bobby ideas, and um, it worked out really well. And she's an amazing person to work with. Um, I think a lot of celebrities, uh, they have good personality and uh, they're willing to do uh, many different ideas. It's really nice. Um, and Fergie, this was shot in New York. Um, and I wanted to show the behind the scene here. Uh, so before Fergie sitting down on the location uh, or the setup, I did something like this just to see how the um, wardrobe will look like. Uh, you know, color-wise, is it matching with the background? And of course, the lighting, the shadow. So we um, we did everything like that before she sat, and then she sat down with the um, wardrobe, and she didn't really like the wardrobe. And, you know, uh, we are changing a little bit of the stuff, the lighting, the background, shadow, everything that I mentioned. And this is the final shot. So um, 
Yeah, you need a lot of preparation, and I would say I will prepare for a few hours at least beforehand, so that it will be very smooth. Uh, this also, I just wanted to show some behind the scene image, just me preparing before the celebrity comes in. And you know, sometimes with the celebrity shoots, you work on their schedule, so it's. Uh, it's a long way, many times it's a long, long way. I think when I shot at uh, Puff Daddy's studio, um, I have waited for about maybe eight hours. And here as well, this shoot, I waited for five hours. So I had time to get out of the location just to have a nice dinner and come back. Uh, but yeah, you need to have that personality, you, you know, um, Things work very slow sometimes in a celebrity world, and you have to have that patience. Uh, but uh, it's okay, I had a good time. Um, so, uh, this is Kelly Rowland, Alicia Keys. Uh, uh, oh, I forgot her name, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, but uh, uh, oh, Ashanti, Ashanti, yes. Um, this is Japanese celebrity. So, um, yeah, it's really nice to shoot for a celebrity, um, and that um, celebrity music type of uh, image got into this. This is a um, Japanese celebrity, Gulei. Um, they are singers and um, shot them for their um, um, concert brochure or something like that. Really nice. Um, but again, this is a long day. I, Got in there at like 10 in the morning, and I finished shooting around 2 a.m. I got home around 4 a.m. Uh, so a photographer has to have that energy and, you know, uh, oh, <laughs> it's, it's long hours. But um, really fun shoots. Um, this is a Sky Ferreira um, in New York City for History Glamour. Um, and uh, it was great. She's uh, amazing to work with. And uh, because these are for commercial, I had more than 20 minutes to shoot. Uh, as well as this lay image, um, I had more time to shoot, like all day. Um, so that's nice when you have that long hours with a celebrity and uh, you get more connection with them and they get more comfortable with you. So that way you get a better shoot. Um, so this was an, a good experience for me. And uh, in the celebrity shoots, at the end, I always ask them to do this type of shoot. This is my box series, and uh, uh, I'm shooting the celebrity inside of the box. Uh, I've been doing this uh, for years, and uh, just wanted to show a couple of them here. And you know, some celebrity I think have an issue with shooting that, but uh, so far so good. I couldn't get Beyonce into that, but I got <laughs> uh, I got Missy Elliott in it, so it was fun. Um, and here I wanted to show um, some of the process that I do, uh, some workflow. Um, so I like to sketch out my idea first. Um, and again, my drawing experience before that, I'm using that to um, uh, draw and also explain to clients and the staff team. It's easier for me to uh, explain my idea if I have the uh, solid drawing for it. So I, uh, this is like my inspiration board. I put my sketch and then I uh, explain I want to use this type of uh, background. Uh, and this type of uh, props, you know, this type of skin tone, whatnot. And this is the uh, result. So I'll go back. This is what I had in mind. This is what I've shot. Um, same thing here. I had this in mind. This is the result. Um, and this series is called Insomniac. Um, just. Um, I had that time, I had that moment of insomniac, and I felt that, okay, yeah, why not making that as a, a fashion shoot? So um, I did that. Everything I do, everything what I produce is something to do with my life or what I'm thinking about at that time. So um, this is a good shoot for me. Um, 
this, that. This was fun. The makeup artist uh, drew an eye, above eye. So the, yeah, it was really nice. The makeup artist did a great job here. Really nice color. Yeah. Um, and then um, I do this uh, things called Maki Brahma. It's uh, my self portraiture series. And again, I said, you know, it's about autobiographical, basically. So this is in Tasmania, Australia. Uh, I first went there for Adobe. Uh, they uh, selected about 10 photographers, and uh, we just traveled through the uh, Tasmania for two weeks to shoot at different locations for Adobe's uh, Lightroom and their new book. Um, so uh, that experience got me some really good idea about my own Makirama project. So um, after that, six months after that, I went back there to shoot my own stuff. And um, you know, this is all my self-funded project, but uh, the tourism of Tasmania helped me. They sponsored me, and I was uh, uh, Olympus was my sponsor at that time. So. Those people really helped me a lot to do this work. So this is how I did it. I didn't use big strobe. It has to be kind of quick because of the uh, background lighting. You know, it's almost sunset time, and I had to walk quickly. So this is what I have: just two lights um, and my camera. Um, and uh, my equipment list uh, are: I use Profoto lighting as my main light. Um, and the Hasselblad with Phase 1 is my main commercial camera, but when I shoot something quick, um, like this image here, I use different camera. I have Nikon D800 now, um, and the pocket wizard transmitter and receivers are something that is very important for me, so I can work quickly. Um, and uh, uh, this is a uh, Makirama series that I did in Tasmania. Um, and uh, the one behind, this is a person behind here, it's called Kuroko in Japan. In the Kabuki Theater world, uh, the Kuroko is an assistant to the dancers. So they just help uh, doing stuff like this, you know, making the uh, dancer look better, you know, by pulling up some clothing or just helping them in general. So I thought that the idea of Kuroko as an assistant was a great idea for my own. Uh, my life and my assistant being my own self, like my inner self type of thing. So here is my mother helping me uh, because she's a dancer. She knows how to put this cloth. And uh, by the way, this type of kimono is really hard to put together by yourself. And I cannot do it by myself. So I had my parents as a assistant in Tasmania helping me putting together. You need at least two people to put these together. So um, it was great. It was like uh, my personal photo shoot and family trip all at the same time. It was great. But before I do this, you know, I do the sketches and I also have enough meetings with the staff team to talk about my ideas. Especially with uh, stylists, I talk really thoroughly just to make sure that she understands my uh, concept because otherwise she will probably bring in something that I wasn't really hoping for. You know, here because it's my personal shoot, I'm choosing my own uh, wardrobe and uh, also the wig and whatnot, and, you know, I'm choosing my own, so that is good. Uh, but the shooting all this was really difficult. You know, Tasmania offers so much beautiful nature, but at the same time, you have to get there, and it's a lot of work. Um, this is by the ocean, so um, you have to bring all the equipment into that ocean side, um, or the mountain sides, just everywhere, right? So that was hard. You know, can you imagine? We walked on this wearing this cloth and we walk on the rocks uh, to get this shoot. Uh, and this one, I yes, I've shot it on, on the lake. I had the uh, chair underneath me, so I'm standing on top of the chair and shooting. But it was so cold. This is Tasmania. Tasmania has like four seasons in 
one season. So I'm shooting outside like this uh, by the ocean side, no problem. And then on the mountain top, it's snowing. So, um, that was quite challenging, but it was fun. So this was the behind the scene. I'm doing a painting on my face myself. My mom is watching. This is about 4 a.m. Uh, and this is on the mountainside. It's really cold, as you can see, and the wind was growing. So they're all trying to hold the um, um, softbox <laughs> so that it won't blow away. Um, and oh my god, yeah, it was snowing at some point, and I'm just trying to get the uh, meter set up, and as well as myself and uh, my intern is helping me putting together the equipment. Um, and my mother, as a, a stylist, uh, fixing my my um, belt uh, while I'm uh, checking my composition. Um, and I use my um, intern to get the competition and then shoot. So this my, <laughs> is my father helping me shooting um, for photo lighting. Um, and another assistant helping me going down on the ocean side. Um, so this was in Tasmania and I got a lot of attention from the uh, people there who lived there. And the next day I was on the newspaper. <laughs> So it's funny, uh, but uh, so this is how I did it, uh, you know, for the lighting, and then the assistant also kind of uh, got my angle and start clicking. Fun stuff, but really hard work, really heavy stuff. <laughs> Okay, so after that, you know, I had a good time. My father did some fishing and we made some sashimi and <laughs> we had a nice time. And this is um, South Sudan, uh, oh, no, not South Sudan, North Sudan, uh, shooting in the ruins. And the great thing about shooting in North Sudan, there's not so much uh, tourism there. So I could have the whole pyramid myself. It's amazing. Uh, so I went there a day before we, uh, stay in this tent hotel, really beautiful tent hotel, um, and then woke up early enough to shoot these images. Um, so it was fun. So um, this is all for my um, presentation, and I can take some questions if you may have. Okay. Thank you, Maki. That was a beautiful presentation. We have a lot of questions that have come in. So what I'm going to do is just kind of go through them um, uh, kind of by topic. Uh, but first and foremost, we have a few comments in here uh, just offering some praise. Michael Berg says, love her use of color, just amazing. Uh, Jacqueline Delay says, I like how you merge photography and grass graphics, so awesome. Uh, the term awesome came up again by Janet Wubin. Awesome work. So a lot of students have really enjoyed um, your presentation. So thank you. Thank you. So just in terms of uh, daily photography life, um, Sarah mm -hmm. Johnson says, uh, your photographs are beautiful and stunning. Do you have a particular shoot that you would call your favorite in comparison to others? Uh, yeah, something that I shoot uh, with my vision and idea really coming through, uh, I get more excited. So, um, um, you know, the graphical photography images that I show, those are good examples. Um, and the editorials is where I can really express my creativity. So. Yes, those images are more of my it images um, than, let's say, a very simple, straightforward white background celebrity image. Hmm. And and would you say that there's uh, per, perhaps a shoot that you didn't like, or or one that perhaps made you want to quit? Uh, no, I never have that moment. You know. Uh, you know, happenings is always expected in photography. Mm -hmm. 
uh, or the shooting assignments. So yes, there are sometimes, you know, these moments like, oh my God, you know, the rental equipment rental people forgot to put this one light that I really needed to use. Or, you know, you have those moments, um, you know, the model is having issues and crying and, uh, you know, she doesn't want to shoot. We, ha we had that moment too, um, you know, and all the celebrity because she slept over and, uh, you know, she has puffy eyes, she didn't want to come in. And we have to kind of talk her down. Um, you know, those moments, but it's, it's expected. So I never had a moment that I feel like, okay, I want to quit being a photographer. Never had that because this is what I really like to do and the challenge is expected. Right, right. Yeah. Now, in terms of, of the models who, you know, maybe have, you know, are having an issue in the studio, um, when when you finally get them in there and they're not worried about their puffy eyes, um, <laughs> is it difficult to to give direction? Um, and, and the reason I ask that is because a lot of our students, you know, they, they might have a friend or a family member or maybe they're looking yeah. on Model Mayhem for models to pose for them mm -hmm. for their assignments and they find it a little challenging in terms of giving a model direction. So what advice would you give to a student in that situation? Um, you know, I also use a lot of uh, just uh, regular people on the streets or the model mayhem models. Um, I think the, the best thing to do is to communicate with them first and get them being more comfortable with you. Um, that's first, you know, you don't have to start shooting right away. You can just have a conversation with them, you know, get them comfortable with you. Because otherwise it will be difficult for you to direct them. Um, and I do this as I talk in shoots, you know, I will just kind of start lightly. I'm like, you know, I'm just shooting test shooting, you know, you don't have to worry about. And just keep talking to them and, and they eventually get more comfortable. Um, so if you have a lot of images that you have to shoot, I usually shoot the less important images in the beginning and more important image at the end. Because at the end, models are usually more comfortable with you and they will give you a better expression and poses and whatnot. So, you know, you can do that kind of tweak, but I think really the key is the communication. Yeah, yeah, that definitely yeah. makes sense. And when you're working with these models, and, and this question comes from uh, Denzel Ernston, do, do you organize permits for them or model releases, or does your agent uh, help you with certain permits, not just for models, but also, say, location permits? Uh, it depends. Uh, okay. If you are uh, shooting along without agents, and you do everything yourself. And I did numerous uh, situations that, you know, I did everything myself. And in that case, you are contacting to model agencies. You have the rep that you're working with. You will go and meet with them. You know, they will give you new models and whatnot. Um, and it's a process. And then once you have a, a model casting, you choose your model, and then I create model release. And I will make sure my assistant give the model release to the model before she leaves the session. So um, yes, every shoot that I do, I have model release. And if I'm shooting on location, there's a location permit that you have to be worried about. Um, I will get that by uh, contacting to the city. Um, and it's very easy to get that. I mean, at least I know that it's easy in New York. I don't know elsewhere. But it should be easy. Um, and if I'm working with a bigger clients, like the advertisement for bank or, you know, the, um, the Kuwait uh, cell phone advertisement, if it's that big scale, yes, there will be production team, lo local production team, and my side of the production team um, and the agent. So they can do all the logistics. They can you know, they can find the uh, models, they can present me, they do all the permissions, they even work on the uh, insurance 
uh, for the location. So yeah, you basically just focus on creativity at that point. Oh, okay. And and from Donovan Lockett, with a, a typical shoot, um, how many assistants would you say that you normally have? You mentioned uh, an assistant using that term loosely, agent or production team. How many people would you say usually goes into to one of your photo shoots? Um, so if it's a smaller shoot, smaller meaning more like an editorial shoot, I will have two assistants. Um, and uh, if it's a bigger shoot, like the French bank, um, then I will have three assistants, uh, or do, you know, two assistants, one intern. Uh, but as far as staff goes, it <laughs> it could get big. Mm -hmm. um, so advertisement because a client is coming, there are other people. You know, assistants, photography assistants might be two or three. But then you will have the digital tech assistant that is one or two, sometimes three. So my side could get like, you know, eight people, ten people. And then there will be the stylist, stylist assistants, makeup assistants, everybody involved. It could get, you know, 20 people, even 30. Right. And yeah. when you're, you're working, um, you know, with so many people, who is um, coming up with the concept behind the shoot, or does it depend? And, and this question comes from uh, Patricia Keplinger. So if it's, you know, I would assume uh, that maybe your self-portraits, you, you come up with that concept. But what about uh, the photographs that you take of the celebrities or at the bank or that sort of thing? Um, I think I am lucky on that. Uh, most of the shoot that I did is with my idea. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not always the case. Uh, most of the advertisement, you work with the um, art director. So they will give you like the exact what they want. Oh, the, so quite a fun advertisement. That's a good example. Um, I didn't um, use my full ideas. It was um, their ideas. Uh, so they had the sketches and, um, you know, I kind of worked with what they wanted to do. Um, just a little tweak, you know, maybe like lens choices, you know, I could do maybe wide angle lens. Uh, but as far as composition and everything, even ideas that was coming from our director. Mm. So I would say editorial, you get your own creativity going. But for advertisement and commercial, there will be restriction. You work your creativity within that restriction, which is challenging and nice and exciting at the same time. Right, right. Um, it, and speaking of creativity, coming from uh, Jacqueline DeLay, how do you maintain your creativity? Or, or where do you seek out inspiration? Or from whom? I, yeah, um, Good question because um, I think as a photographer or any form of art artists, uh, we need to keep seeing new things, you know, new art or go to exhibitions, uh, see the really good famous art or the contemporary art, new commercial art. Just everything can be your inspiration. Any does not have to be the form of photography or painting. It could be the form of anything, really. You know, it could be the book that might inspire you. It could be just the street um, or the theater, you know, music, dance. Anything, really, that you are in interested in can be the inspiration. And in my case, because I'm so into uh, performing arts, uh, I do go and see dance performance or the Japanese kabuki theater, um, stuff like that a lot. Yeah. Um, with, and I, I would definitely agree with, you know, going to the museums and, and seeing what is out there. Um, I think a lot of our 
our students hopefully do that on their own to kind of seek out inspiration. Are there any um, blogs, photo blogs that you follow that uh, you might seek inspiration from or just to kind of stay in, in the know of the photo world? Um, I do strobist. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, I'm a good researcher. I just Google everything. <laughs> um, and uh, so I could hit on a different type of blogs and, you know, stuff. But um, I do like to read the photo magazines like the you know, American Photo or mm -hmm. PDN is also very nice because it shows more up-and-coming photographers. Um, yeah, um, I don't have a particular blog that I'm following, but I, I search every day, just every day. Um, and even going to a cafe and restaurants, I tend to choose different places every time so that the interior can inspire me. Um, and the interior, it could be something that you can shoot in that interior in the future. So you never know, right? So every day I'm kind of doing the location stuff. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I never thought yeah. about, you know, kind of going to different locations. Uh, when you say, you know, you're going to a different cafe, are you kind of using that time as like your sit-down Wi-Fi research time or just simultaneously thinking of of scouting in that in that space yeah I have to say I do love going to cafe and just just kind of brainstorming my idea so just sit down mm -hmm. you know and then the idea comes up um, and sometimes these quirky funky places can give me ideas as well um, I had some shoot actually I went to eat at this one restaurant in New York City and the interior was really like futuristic. And then I got the idea popping in my mind right away. So I draw it. Before I forget, I draw it. And then I present it to the magazine that I was working with at that time and they liked it. So I, I shot the images. So, you know, things like that can happen. Mm -hmm. um, and I do like new food or different, you know, different cuisines. So yeah, that also helped. It just me liking going to places to eat or going to cafe that also has something to do with it but i get inspired by it as well right right oh well, that's great and when you're you know you're thinking about these um you know these drawings or this inspiration that you're taking in this question kind of comes from uh aletha Whittaker. Um, you noted that you like working in color. Uh, do you also work in black and white? If not, what is it about the color that kind of draws you to that decision? Um, yeah, uh, before I started shooting uh, fashion, you know, the first image I showed the Barbie series, um, I was shooting street photography in black and white. Hmm. So my beginning was to go, the first photo shoot I did was black and white street photo in Paraguay and Brazil. Um, and that got me into black and white photography and I was shooting on the streets of New York and I was developing my own pictures in dark room, <laughs> people never do anymore. But um, yes, yeah, so I was big on black and white, but when I started shooting color, I think it clicked with what I already have known as a child. You know, my mother is dancing on the stage and that color kind of came back to me and, you know, I, I started shooting more and more color. So I do black and white sometimes, but really I, I do more color now because that's what I'm comfortable with and that's what I'm good at. Hmm. When you were shooting that, um, the black and white street photography, was that around the same time that you were also incorporating uh, your imagery with the graphic design skills? And maybe 15 minutes through your presentation, you were showing some images that were kind of a, a mixture of, of still photography and, and graphic design together. 
did one influence the other or? Uh, yes. Um, in the beginning, really in the beginning, I was just shooting straight shots. But then soon after, because I was in graphic design uh, major, I wanted to do some fun stuff with photography and graphics. So, um, yeah, I started playing around uh, just the idea of mixing the graphics with a uh, picture. Um, it didn't get to anywhere, but just for me, for myself, I, I did that. So, yes, it will influence one another, I think so. Mm -hmm. And this question is from Mary Gallagher. Uh, when you do create um, the mixture of still photographs with the graphic design, what is your turnaround time like, or does it just depend on what the client is, mm -hmm. is kind of wanting there? <laughs> um, okay, so if you remember the Vibe magazine images with Godzilla. Yeah. That took a long time, I mean, uh, because there's so many layers and then the graphic design and, oh, wow, um, one image could take a long time, or a day or even more. So, um, yes, it took a while to finish that project. Uh, I would say more than a week, maybe. And it was a countless nights of less sleeping, like a few hours of sleep with a lot of coffee. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it could be very challenging. And I would have to say, you know, the straight shot is uh, much easier as far as time um, because the graphics uh, involve more, you know, uh, retouching and uh, copy and paste and whatnot. So it does take a long time. And yes, I spend all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just uh, touching on, you know, turnaround times and editing from Phyllis Wyatt, uh, what programs do you prefer to use when you're editing still photographs or when you're combining still photographs with graphics? Okay, um, I do Lightroom to edit. Mm -hmm. and uh, retouch on Photoshop. Oh, okay. This is the two basic or the two almost only uh, softwares that I use and uh, Illustrator if I would do the illustration work on top of it. Oh, okay, well that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And when you're shooting, this question is from Robin uh, Burnham, what type of mm -hmm. camera do you use and in your opinion what part of the camera is more important, the body or the lens? You know, there are many cameras out there, and I use, for a big commercial, I use Hasselblad with Phase 1, and uh, I also use Nikon D800. But do I want the uh, uh, lens or body, or which one is more important? You know, I don't really think about this. Um, because for me, my focus is more about to get my idea coming through, and the equipment could help me doing that, but I don't go too um, crazy about which lens is the better one or yeah. which body is, you know, it doesn't matter. I think for me, if I have a strong idea, I could use any type of equipment to produce that idea, you know. It's right. kind of like... It's kind of like a painter have a strong idea in using uh, different kind of brushes, but it doesn't matter what they use. They could use an even finger to finish their ideas, you know. So for me, it's not too important which camera you use. Right, right. Um, would you say the same thing for, for lighting equipment? And this comes from Mary Smith and Christina Clark. Um, you know, do you prefer when, when thinking about your concepts to be shooting with, you know, a big soft box to produce a soft light or, you know, bare bulbs to produce hard light. How would you explain your decision making on, on lighting equipment? Lighting equipment also, yeah, I have a similar approach to that. Uh, but I do like pro photo and I guess because that's what I've been working with and uh, for a long, long time from art. 
RIT time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they had the cage and you just uh, rent your equipment as a student. And I got to experience with different lighting. But, you know, it's just like a chemistry, you know, you, yeah. you work with the different brands and I just like the profile. It was easier for me to work with. I like the lights. I like the quality that they produce. Um, so I stick with them. You know, I don't really go any other anymore. But if I have a situation that I do not have access to Profoto, yes, I use different lightings, Dynalite or any others, and it's totally fine with me. I could even use the flash lighting, you know, the detachable small flash lighting with a small soft box on it. Mm -hmm. That is okay with me as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And when you're um, setting up your self-portraits, this question comes mm -hmm. from uh, Jan Maloney. In, in thinking about these self-portraits, the concepts, the lighting, um, you know, the outfit that you're wearing, there's some, is there somebody else physically snapping the photo? Yes. So I, uh, I showed you the picture of me uh, fixing the composition. Yes. So, yes. yes. So after that, I would let my assistant click. Yeah. So you mm -hmm. kind of arrange the frame and right. that sort of thing. Right. Now, is mm -hmm. there a reason why um, you choose to have the assistant click versus using a, a remote or a cable release or something like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, cable release I won't do because it will be in a picture. Right. Uh, yeah. But um, yeah, it just to me it's easier just assistant clicking because I can tell them, okay, click now, click now, click now. Or, you know, she'll be just constantly clicking and mm -hmm. I know the timing, so I will just yeah. pause, 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 pause. Uh, right. So right. to me it's easier without having any release in my hands. Um, just easier because I move a lot, you know, as I, um, as I move all my models, I also move myself a lot. So it's harder for me if I have something in my hand. Mm -hmm. um, so I use assistance, yes. Right. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, question from Andrew Johnson, and th this will be the, the final question. Uh, great mm -hmm. question to end the lecture on. Um, for those students who are um, still trying to figure out their style, I mean, we have a, a slew of students who want to be fashion photographers or high school senior portrait photographers or wedding photographers, um, but maybe they kind of bounce back and forth between the genres. So for somebody who's still trying to discover their style, what advice would you kind of give um, to somebody to to either narrow that path or to widen that path? You know, uh, I think as you shoot more, you will narrow that path. Mm -hmm. You won't widen uh, because, you know, one genre is already full. Um, you know, it's hard to do landscape and fashion or, I mean, yeah, of course there's a, a fashion photographer who's specializing in landscape fashion, but, um, yeah, I would say like in the beginning, do not think about your style. You just shoot what you want and you just follow your guts and you follow your instincts. That's the best to do for me because when you start thinking about your own style, you just, it's not natural, you know. You have your style already when you are producing any type of your work. You already have your style. So just to kind of analyze yourself and start understanding exactly what you want to do. Some people take very short time. Some people take a lifetime. But... I would say just just go natural. Don't don't think too much about style. It will come to you. Right. So um, yeah, just keep shooting. And uh, you know, the one thing though is good to good to think about is the marketing part. If you are marketing yourself uh, in a certain field, then you know in your uh, um, 
in your home base like uh, website you don't want to show the mixture of let's say you should include photography and you also shoot uh, fashion photography but you also shoot animal and landscape all in one website it's not going to work so you have to think about how you want to present yourself to the world how you want the world to know you as you know you if somebody asks you so what type of photography you do you want to answer in one word or just one simple sentence you don't want to say oh I do this and this and this and this mm -hmm. so that's something you want to think about as far as direction right but style wise I wouldn't suggest focus too much on that one right right yeah, focus more on the genre versus the style, per se. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for a wonderful lecture. We've really enjoyed it. Thank you. And um, if you don't mind, we're going to share, well, you know, we've obviously got your website here up on, on the screen. Um, but in our community, if we can share that YouTube link that you were uh, showing before and you can just email it to me later and I'll share it with the students sure. that would be helpful okay. I think they'd really like to take a closer look at that oh, great. great great well thank you again Maki and everybody please enjoy the rest of your evening thank you thank bye. you bye-bye